Hello, welcome back to another installment of Nook at Night. Today we're going to be reading Untinti's Inferno by Nookrium. Deep under the mighty volcano, the roundabout of flame, lived Jimmy Cobalt. He was not exceptional in any way, but did his best to serve and build the great temple of Ontinti deep in the caves under the mountain. For many days he mined, hammered, and chopped as the great keeper instructed, all in hopes of one day being able to serve Ontinti personally by being chosen to make the great leap into the fiery abyss of the roundabout of flame. Praise Ontinti. It was the middle of the night when Chief Nash Tank stormed into Jimmy's den to assemble a team to venture out of the caves and pillage a nearby village. Jimmy was thrilled. He never left the cave before, and it could, he could only impress the chief. It would only be a matter of time before he would be selected as an offering for Ontinti. His mind ran wild with the thoughts of flame, lava, and Ontinti's judgment. Praise Ontinti. Jimmy walked for hours. With every step, he could feel the warmth of the volcano consuming him. A distant bolt of lightning snapped him out of his daydream as he looked around. His heart sank. The group was gone. No sign of Nash Tank, the others, or even the way home. Jimmy was alone. All was dark, and Jimmy was scared. No home, nowhere to go, no hope. He knew his chances of offering were gone. He would never feel the power of Untinti again. After wandering for hours, Jimmy stumbled across a large cave. He scrambled his way inside. A warmth came over Jimmy, reminding him of home, which lured him in deeper. As Jimmy turned a corner, his mouth dropped. In front of him lay mountains of gold and treasure, swords, coins, jewels. The sight overwhelmed Jimmy, and without thinking, he blurted out, Praise Ondinti. Jimmy quickly snapped back to reality when his eyes caught something. The mountain of gold began to move. Jimmy froze. From under the pile emerged a giant eye. A single eye larger than Jimmy, even larger than Nash Tank. As Jimmy stood frozen, and the deafening sounds of treasure fell all around, the pile of treasure began to reveal a massive red dragon. Jimmy had heard tales of dragons before, but to see one was something few had ever done. Even fewer had lived to tell about it. Jimmy turned to run. He took two steps before stumbling over and getting tangled up in something. He didn't have time to think or even untangle himself. Just run. He clambered on all fours for the opening of the cave. He could hear behind him the clamoring of metal and scale. Then came a deafening roar. Just as he reached the mouth of the cave, Jimmy felt a rush of heat. He dove into the dirt just outside the cave as a blast of fire filled the air in an awesome explosion of terror just over Jimmy's tiny huddled body. Once the flame cleared, Jimmy crawled and stumbled away as fast as he could. Through rain, tears, and a th thumping heart, Jimmy could hear the rumble and fear the ground sh uh, quake as the dragon roared again. But tiny Jimmy had made it out, alive and safe. He crawled for what seemed like hours, still lost and alone. Finally, he stopped to catch his breath and untangle whatever was still clinging to him from the cave. Wrapped around his scrawny leg was the straps of a leather bag, which seemed to have something inside. Jimmy managed to free himself from the pack and took a look. Tears filled his eyes again, as from the pack he pulled out the shiniest dagger he'd ever seen. Golden handle, silver blade, a ruby gem set in the hilt. He leaned his head back to shout, pray, like a lighthouse on a stormy night. The molten red glow of his home, the roundabout of flame, shone in the distance. Praise Ondinti. Jimmy had survived a dragon, found a new backpack, even found his way home. Nothing could stop his sacrifice now. He stormed into the caves, puffed his chest out, ready to show off what he had accomplished, when standing directly in front of his path was none other than Nash Tank. Jimmy recoiled at the side of the giant, but managed to muster enough strength in his shaking arms to hold out the bag and stammer out, Dragon! Nash Tank stared. His piercing eyes met Jimmy's. And something strange happened. 
Something Jimmy could not have seen coming in a million lifetimes. The smallest nod of affirmation. The deafening sound of thunder rang throughout the halls as, without Jimmy realizing, all of the residents of the caves and the temple of Odinti had come to witness this. A bell rang out through the calamity and out stepped the great keeper. You could hear every step as the room fell deathly silent. She slowly made her way across the room. Not a word was said. And after a long look at Nash Tank, she took the pack, inspected it and its contents intently. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, she looked over the crowd and then straight to Jimmy and shouted, Well done! You shall now be known as Backpack. Praise Ontinti. Within moments, all was quiet again. Something wasn't sitting right with Jimmy. Now Backpack. He loved the attention, the feeling of accomplishing something, the adventure. But when he, he knew that gaining a name from the Great Keeper had a price. No one named by the Great Keeper ever got thrown into the fires of the volcano. That's all Backpack had ever really wanted. To serve Ontinti right and offer himself to their glorious flame. The following days, Backpack fell further into sadness, being noticed by his fellow peons, wearing his new pack, swinging his dagger around, scaring off the Urist boys, just didn't make him happy. What's the point of all this fame and glory if I can't do the one thing I really want? Praise him, Tim Tim. Imp, get over here. It was a week later, and Nash Tank was standing in the corridor. I have a job for you, he barked. The Great Keeper needs a book, and that cave you were in has it, Nash Tank, Nash Tank continued. Take that bag of yours and go get it. We need it for the next sacrifice. Uh, Ontinti needs this book, Backpack nervously replied. Yes, and the Great Keeper says Ontinti will smite you if you don't bring it back in time, ordered Nash Tank. Ontinti mentioned me by name? questioned Backpack, but before he could finish the sentence, Nash Tank was already storming away. Backpack quietly threw on his pack, strapped his dagger to his waist, and set out of the cave. With fire of determination, a fire of determination in his eye, he stomped back to the dragon's lair. Praise Ontinti. Backpack couldn't get the thought of Ontinti mentioning his name, or even knowing who he was, out of his mind. He had a purpose, and getting his hands on that book could be an even greater offering to Untinti. Before he knew it, he was back. Standing in front of him was the cave. He could see the char and the claw marks on the entrance now in the sunlight. His mind raced with the thoughts of how to get back in without the dragon noticing, but he figured with Untinti on his side, he would be just fine. Silently, he crept into the lair. In front of him lie the mountains of gold and jewels. Backpack could feel the saliva filling his mouth at the sight, but stifled the thought of just diving in and filling his pack. As he scanned the treasure mounds, no sign of the dragon at all, he noticed a small desk with a book spread open across the room against the cave wall. Backpack tiptoed his way through the room. Sweating from the heat still present, he wiped his forehead clear of moisture. Finally... The desk lie directly in front of him. He'd done it. He reached his bony hands out and clasped the leathery tome. Suddenly, a bright flash of light, an explosion of fire burst out from the ceiling. Backpack could feel his body melting away as he looked up and saw the dragon perched high above. Watching his every move, the dragon let out a roar. Shouting at the top of his lungs two familiar words echoed through Backpack's soul. With his final moment of life, a smile curled across Backpack's face. The end. Good night.